This is my 2010 Ram with a 5.7 Hemi. I decided I wanted to try replacing the PCM. So I picked up a used PCM. The only trouble is this PCM is coded to a different vehicle. Hello YouTubes. If you've been following along, you'll know that I've been chasing mechanical or electrical gremlins with my RAM for the last couple of months. So we have tried a lot of stuff. I'm not going to get into all of that just now. I'll detail everything we've done it towards the end of the video. Today is going to be about replacing my PCM or ECU. I actually didn't realise that the PCM is just a different name for the ECU in the RAM. When I went to buy this, I said to the guy, if this doesn't work, I'll be back for the ECU. And he says that's what that is. So, per control module, uh, ECM, ECU, apparently it's the same thing. The only trouble is, this is coded, skim coded, skim moduled, whatever, to the vehicle it came out of. It's basically an immobiliser thing. No big deal if you take it to Chrysler and they reprogram it, but... I think my new scan tool will take care of that. Another option to get past that would be to get the skim module from the vehicle this came from and all the keys and all that palaver. So I'm hoping, as I say, that my scan tool can basically tell this ECU the VIN number of this truck and everything should work fine. So let us begin by noting down the VIN number and any information we need from the ECU that's currently in the truck. And if we have to, we can transfer it to that. Let us begin. So I have my X2 scan tool plugged in. As I say, I am going to do a, do a scan, reset any error codes, because when I put the new ECU in, I don't want to like combine and confuse codes. Although it's only going to pick up codes from the new one. Anyway, I'm going to switch it on, get the details I need. Mark them down before I take this ECU off and put the new one on. And I'm going to hit record so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, you can stop bonging, thank you. Right, let's go to auto scan first of all. So there's my VIN there. I don't think that's going to change when I go into the, the ECU details, but we'll find out. So that ends 4052. Okay, that. Do an auto scan. Oh, it wants me to start the engine. I don't really want to start the engine just now. Alright, start the engine. Always starts great, that's not the issue. It's once the idle drops, it starts running like a pig, but as I say, I'll talk about that later. Right, onward. Okay, that. Give it a sec. It's got a lot of information to read. Scanning, scanning. Right, so. Right, I must have already reset it because I'm not having any codes other than the anti-lock brakes, which is a bizarre one because that just that must just be dirt or something because the brakes are working fine. And that's not going to stop it from running properly. Oh, apparently a tyre pressure monitor's gone as well, which is nonsense because they're brand new. Oh, just ignore all that. So basically, that's fine. I'm not going to clear those codes. Let's go back. Yes, I want to exit that. System selection. Powertrain control module. The engine is started. Okay, that. So we've got read ECU information. Let's do that. Oh, ECU part number. Interesting. So I need to take a note of that. Uh, well, I'm recording this anyway, so I can review that later. Everything else seems fine. I'll read trouble codes again just in case it's picking anything up. See, there's my multiple cylinder misfire. But it's not registered an engine warning light yet. 
but this is what I'm trying to get rid of this multiple cylinder misfire because once it registers it a few times then it it goes into crap mode and drives like a pig okay so I've got that code I've got the the VIN number let's go back to diagnosis diagnosis um, uh, yeah diagnosis dodge and just make sure we're going to be able to get this uh, ECU thing System selection, powertrain control module, engine started. I don't think it's going to do this with the engine running, to be honest. Special functions, let's see if it's in there. We have... Oh, actually I might also need the odometer. This function will write the current mileage into a new PCM. Interesting. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that when the... It's still with the old PCM. Let's OK that and see what happens. Hmm, I'm guessing the PCM is not connected to the odometer. OK, I'll double check that before I'll, before I'll <laughs> destroy it. I'll at least take a note of the, the mileage on this, or the kilometerage. 302,321, in case I forget to write it down, okay. Meanwhile, this thing's confused because I've switched the, I've not switched the engine off. I wonder if we can back out of that. Yes, we can. Learn ETC, uh, no, cancel that. See, I'm looking for, oh, check PCM VIN. This feature will allow the user to view the current valid VIN or write a valid VIN. Okay, that. Vehicle VIN is valid. Blah, blah, blah. Press yes to change the VIN. Press no to exit. Hmm. Okay. We will go no for that for now because I don't want to screw something up while it's running. And we can come back to that. So that's check PCM VIN when we're ready to do that. Okay, we've got all the data that I can get from this. So let's switch it off and go and change the ECU, PCM, whatever it's called. It's really annoying because it's running perfectly without any fault codes in the dash. But we know it'll trigger one. Right, engine bay. So this is my new old replacement ECU PCM. I marked a number two on it just in case I take the other one out and forget which is which. And it lives down in this corner here on the firewall. It's held on with 10 mil, 10 mil, 10 mil at the other side. So three in total. So I need to remove all those plugs, pull them off, swap it over. Should be relatively easy to do that. But first, I'm going to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. I don't want to short anything out at this stage. I'm also going to move this out of the way, give me a wee bit more access. Uh, just a couple of clips and just I should be able to leave that over this way. Right, I'll see you when we're taking that off. Battery is disconnected. Now it turns out that these little bolts are actually 8mm on my truck. Yeah, I was just I was just reading out what I had heard. Right, so we need to take these four clips off. So the little safety tab gets clicked back. If you've got super strong fingers, you won't need a screwdriver, but I'm just using this. Now I've already had these off to check them, so they should come off fairly easily. Wiggle it, just a little. Oh no, you need to press it. Oh, idiot. Press that thing there. See it, press that. And then wiggle it just a little bit. Repeat, repeat, repeat. That's them out the way. Right, let's get these eight mils off. Oh, of course, now my plugs are in the way. One. Two. 
be these are weird screws they're, they're almost like wood screws and they're, they're only on with like that much of the thread it's kind of weird anyway that'll come off now I mean it looks perfectly normal but you can't possibly tell what's going on inside so let's slap the new one in while we're here it seems to go on upside down uh, yeah so you've got green white orange and no color on that one for some reason shiggles about. There's no like locating dowels or anything, you just have to put it in with the screws, which I will do now. Look how little that actually screws in. It'd be very easy to mess that up, <laughs> which is what I'll probably do. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, they are all on, not mega tight, because I'm not really sure what they're screwing into. They're certainly not earthing it, I don't think. Right, plug these in. Clip. Clip. Little tabs. Clip. Tab. Clip. Tab. And that's that done. I'll just get the earbox back on, reconnect the battery, and I'll see you inside for the fun part. Hello again. Right, I've got my scan tool plugged in. I will hit record so you can see what on earth I'm doing, or witness to the apocalypse. And recording. Right, I'll put my Mr. Clever glasses on. I've got my notes from my VIN number from the previous ECU. Let's see what happens. Put this on to ignition on, but without the engine. Wait for the bonging to stop. Let's go into diagnosis. Oh my goodness, it's bonging away. Oh, right, so I've got a little red flashing ball. Bottom right corner, the red flashing light. Okay, dodge. Uh, oh, automatic or manual? Let's go automatic detection. Okay, so the VIN it currently has ends in 8937, which is not the one that this truck has. Okay, that. System selection. Powertrain control module. Please start the engine. <laughs> I don't even know if it's going to start. It starts. Okay, that. And it went off again. Which I was kind of expecting it to, because the whole point of this is to immobilise it. Okay, let's go to special functions. Check PCM VIN. This feature will allow the user to view the current valid VIN or write a valid VIN. Okay. Press yes to change the VIN. Yes. Please enter VIN. Give me a second. So, I... Oh, I wonder if it needs to be a capital I. Let's just, just make sure. ID7. Give me a minute. RV1. <sighs> Finally got it right. So it definitely has to be capital letters and the numbers have to be right. So VinWrite was successful. See what happens next. Oh, I also switched the ignition off and back on again. Engine not running. I don't know if that made a difference or if it was just bad typing. Onward, okay. 
So, presumably, well, let's check PCM, just to make sure it's the right one. Yep, that is the VIN of my truck. Right, let's switch it off and back on again and turn the engine on and see if it runs this time. Red lights flashing, 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 bonging, still flashing, which is weird. Oh, so it's a warning lights. So I've got my traction control light on, I've got my ABS light on, airbag light on. Let's check. Uh, Read trouble codes, bearing in mind that some of these errors might have been previously on the ECU from the last vehicle. Read trouble code. Invalid SIM key. Well, we've already sorted that. All right, we're still in power control module, so let's get right back out of this. all the way out and go to auto scan. Okay, it's got the right VIN number. Okay, that. Automatic scan. Engine has started. <sighs> Did you notice those uh, Train control module error codes. I noticed them. Let's see what they're actually saying if it's the same ones that we had before or if this is from the previous vehicle. Let's diagnose per control module, per train control module, diagnose, read trouble code. Hmm. All it's showing is invalid skim key, which is weird because it's running. Ah, right, let's clear trouble code. Switch it off. Ignition on. Without the engine running. Okay, this. Wait for that to stop bonging at me. Okay, that. Do you want to clear all the trouble codes? Yes. Oh, stop bonging. Clear trouble code successfully. Read trouble code. No trouble code. Back out of that. Back out of that. Back out of that. Okay, that. Ignition off. Right, so this time when we switch it on and run it, we shouldn't get, at least we shouldn't get the skim code thing. So I'm still getting the little red flashing ball. You know what, Let, oh, I'll show you. This little guy down here. Now what I'm not getting is uh, the engine, <laughs> engine warning light. But as we know from past experience that Engine warning light doesn't come on until I rev it over a thousand or up to two thousand RPM. I don't want to do that yet. I want to at least get rid of the the flashing ball. All right, give me a minute. Right, here's where we're at. I switched it off, locked it, walked away, unlocked it, did that a couple of times, and now that little red flashing ball is gone. Unfortunately, I now have a multitude of new warning lights, which is kind of bizarre, but I think this is what happens when you buy someone else's PCM and uh, it might not be working 100% and 
in a different way that mine wasn't working 100%. Now, the big test is if I rev it up above 2000 RPM, will I get the engine warning light coming on? So let's find out. By this point, normally I would have my engine warning light coming on here and it would start running really, really rough. But it's still running really nice. So, we may have fixed it but broken something else. So the only, the only way to tell for sure is I need to get the cover off the hot rod, take the truck out for a wee drive. Quite excited. Here goes then. Starts fine. It'll probably bong because of all those faults that I apparently now have. I don't care about those bongs. As long as it dries fine, then we can sort the other stuff. Oh, brakes are a wee bit squealy. Not been anywhere in a while. That's nonsense. They were always squealy when I reverse. Something to do with the parking brake. What? Oh, parking system. Hmm. My garage door thing isn't working at the moment. Oh well, hope. Hopefully no one will break into the house. Anyway, enough about that. Let's concentrate on the, the drive. So far, so good. Still good. MDS is working. That's when it cuts down to like four cylinders when you're cruising very, very slowly. So I don't mind that, that's, that's still working. So far, so good, still working. fine. I'm not going to accelerate hard around about here anyway because apparently you get speeding tickets if you drive too fast on this road. Ask me how I know. Actually don't. Insurance company doesn't need to know about that. We are still good. This is the furthest I've gone in weeks without a fault code coming up. You know what, I'm feeling brave. I'm going to go to the next roundabout as well. Which really will be the furthest I've gone in months. Well, uh, weeks. No, months without a fault code. Still good. Still good. Still good. Still, I'm, I'm not smiling yet because every time I smile, I curse it and uh, it stops working. Still good. <sighs> Round we go. No, you just pull out in front of me. Yeah, I'm okay with that. People here do not understand how roundabouts work. Still good. Still good, so just while I'm still gooding at you. We've got a traction control warning light. We've got an ABS warning light. We've got the airbag warning light and a little circle with the uh, brackets around it and an exclamation mark in the middle, a little red fault. I didn't have these before, so I'm guessing it's something to do with the, the PCM that I've installed has inherited these faults. There might be a way to reset the memory in the PCM, but we'll look into that later. At the moment, I just want to do a complete trip away from the house, back to the house, without it bonging and turning into a bag of dog doo-doo. 
and so far, so far it's good. So far, still good. Can we make it home? The first successful trip in months. Still good. Still good. Still good. And this isn't just a luck thing. Every time I've gone out in the last couple of weeks, it's bonged almost immediately. Still good and we're nearly home. This is exciting. Don't be too excited. We're not home yet. We're almost home. Let me reverse the truck back in the driveway without hitting all the garbage bins. Don't worry, it's just my parking assist. I usually switch that off. I'd rather just hit the thing than be subjected to that noise all the time. No, I'm only joking. I would never do that. Set up. And we're home. No engine fault code. Victory! I was just tempting it there. Victory! I think we've done it, guys. I think we have done it. Hands up if you said PCM or ECU. There was about three or four people that had mentioned that. I know Bill was one of them. And there was someone very recently that suggested the PCM. I think that's it. I think it's finally resolved this bizarre problem of cylinder misfires and camshaft and crankshaft and all sorts of nonsense. Yes, I do have new errors, but they don't stop me driving the truck or selling the truck. I'm still not going to sell the truck until I have got rid of all those errors. I might even fork out and get a new PCM. Maybe one of those Diablo ones I keep hearing about that's tunable. We'll see, we'll see how much they cost. I think it might be worth it just to have it running perfectly. But I think that's all I've changed today. Yesterday it was running crap, today it's running great. So I think we can agree it's something to do with the PCM. Now, before I leave that subject to the PCM, if anyone knows more about PCMs, can I just hit the erase button to basically clear all the memory? I tried clearing all the fault codes, but that didn't get rid of those things. I think they're, they're hard flashed onto the ECU or something. And they shouldn't be there because they weren't there with the other ECU. Or maybe the other ECU wasn't uh, telling me that I had those faults because it was bad. I might get a new uh, ECU. Now that I know that, it's pretty much the root of the problem. Thank you all so much for all your suggestions. And it didn't end up costing a fortune. Uh, it could have been much worse. It could have been the cam and lifter thing. That's, that's been keeping me up at night thinking that I'm going to have to strip that engine down, but I've driven it fine, it's, it doesn't tick. The other thing about the cam and lifter thing, people still drive their trucks with that hemi tick with the cam and lifter problem. This was not drivable, so I knew, well I didn't know, but I was fairly confident it wasn't the cam and lifters. I'm babbling. Right, let's let's have a seat, it's a, bit, it's a bit wet out here. Let's have a seat and I'll go through everything that I checked, just in case anyone is going through this same problem, okay? So this all started a couple of months ago. My son borrowed the truck to go to work because his car's broken and still is. That's another story. Anyway, he called me on the way home from work saying the truck was acting really strange, underpowered, and he wasn't sure whether to drive it back or not. So I was so fed up at the time, I just said, drive it back. We'll deal with it if you can make it home because I just couldn't be bothered to Go out and uh, I had to do the swap over thing because I've got CAA, you know, like uh, AAA if you like, but it's only registered to me. So I would have to go out, meet him in the highway. Oh, anyway, so he got home. Right, next day, I plug in the scan tool and it says engine misfire, cylinder five and multiple cylinder misfire. So I started with cylinder five 
I took the coil out, checked the spark plugs. Remember, there's two per cylinder. <coughs> Excuse me. And I bought new spark plugs, threw that back in, still the same. So then I got a new coil, put that in with the new plugs, still the same. So then I swapped injectors between five and three, still the same. Actually, no, it changed to a crankshaft position sensor fault. So I thought, oh, okay, that's fine. So I got a new crankshaft position sensor, looks like that. And that didn't get rid of the problem, so I got another crankshaft position sensor. That solved the problem, except then it said I had a camshaft position sensor problem. So I got another camshaft position sensor. That didn't work. Went back to crank, I got, I basically I've got three spare crankshaft position sensors because I figured they were cheap Amazon parts, maybe they're all faulty. No, no, no. Then I decided to take the driver's side valve cover off to check the valves going up and down properly in case it was the whole cam and lifter problem that you'd probably heard about, the whole Hemi tech. I uh, did a visual inspection of that, everything looked fine, absolutely fine. Then it was suggested that I do a compression test in that cylinder. So I did all the cylinders on the driver's side and they were all absolutely fine. So I knew it wasn't compression related. I knew it wasn't valve related. Although it was still at the back of my head, it might even have just been a slight error because the fault keep change, kept changing between camshaft sensors and uh, misfires and oh, it just went on and on. So then it was suggested recently that it could be the PCM and that's obviously what I did today and it seems to have sorted it kind of, albeit with extra faults, extra added bonus faults, but they don't stop it from driving. So that's, that's what I went through. Now, a lot of people did say at the time you should just be buying more power sensors. Well, if I'd done that, that would have cost me hundreds of dollars and I wouldn't have been any further forward. At least this way, I've only spent a fraction of the of what it could have cost, and now I know that I need either a new, C, a new ECU PCM, or I need to learn how to program that properly and get rid of all those bonus errors that I really don't need. But it's driving great, very happy. Thanks for all your help, and yes, I will be addressing the rusty bits at the bottom of the truck before I uh, even think about selling this thing. This is great. And I apologise to all my regular viewers who have been wanting to see this uh, kit car getting built and working at Bugsy. Normal programming will resume very soon. I do have parts for that BMW, so hopefully that will be done next week as well. <sighs> Need to go and have a coffee, maybe a cigarette. Take care, everyone. Drive safe. See you soon.